Hey everybody, I haven't had a fun video in a while. So here we're going to talk a little bit of opera. Sorry, I haven't been keeping up with it on the Met Opera because I've gotten distracted by other shows that are free because I'm a Met Opera subscriber. I've seen a lot of these operas before, some of them many times before, but the reason I'm coming to you today is the one Met Opera is doing tonight. And unfortunately, it's not La Fanciulla del West. I'm sorry, I do not speak Italian. Molto bene. Not really well, at least. And um, this one, actually, Girl of the American West, the Girl of the West, it, it is very funny uh, watching these Italian operas that are set in America. Okay, but that's not what I want to talk about, um, because that one's almost over. It is currently 5.13 p.m. in New York, and they're going to stop providing free access to non-subscribers to that one at 6.30 p.m. to get ready for tonight's opera, which is Falstaff. This is my favorite Verdi opera. It's his only comedy in the repertoire. He had written another comedy, by the way, but it was a flop at the beginning of his career. It took him until the very end of his career before he wrote another comedy, and this one's a lot of fun. Verdi was a huge Shakespeare fan. And he gave the world the false staff it deserved. Now, you may say, well, didn't Shakespeare do that? Well, all the good false staff stuff are in the history plays. Uh, I guess it's King Henry IV, parts one and two. He shows up in, he kind of shows up in King Henry V, Henry V play, but at the very uh, offstage, he dies. So that's not very fun. Anyway, this is Falstaff. He's past his prime, but this is the fun-loving guy. And what's great is he's made the butt of jokes. It's There's a lot of physical comedy in this. I love this particular production. I love the man who plays Falstaff in this. Uh, he's also my favorite, I guess, Dr. Dolcamara, the con man in Elixir of Love. A lot of the other ones I've seen, I've not liked who they have in that role. So he's like the perfect, he's an Italian himself. Uh, he loves cooking. I believe this specific production in one of the cutaways, and they, I think they've been running them at the end of these, not during the intermission, but I could be wrong. Um, that, uh, you know, the little interviews with the singers and stuff like that. So he's a lot of fun. He doesn't, I don't think he speaks in English. Uh, he has a translator with him, which is fine. Anyway, Falstaff is a lot of fun. You don't actually need to know a lot going into it. It throws you right into the action. It plays like a sitcom. This production is set like it's in a 1950s Westchester Country Club, and you see all the writing stuff. It's like it's set in North Salem because this is a very horsey area. So you've got the fox hunting. We do actually have real fox hunting up here. Anyway. So that's a lot of fun. What it's really well known for is not the arias. Uh, there's no real aria in it. It's a lot of ensemble singing and it's very well balanced. Um, this is not one for divas or devos. It's for people who can sing in an ensemble. You've got have to have great timing in comedy. You don't have to, this is a very broad comedy, so you don't have to be that good at acting. Uh, but it's very well done. There are these group pieces that are just amazingly composed, and it ends with a fugue, uh, which is a Baroque-era musical form. Uh, think of Johann Sebastian Bach. He was known for fugues. Others were known for fugues, too, but um, it's a very complicated musical form. Um, and very got to use it in an opera, uh, and evidently that kind of tickled him. He had a great time uh, making this one. He did this with the same man um, who had worked on Othello with him. Uh, Verdi loved Shakespeare, and what's great about Verdi with Shakespeare, and he also did Macbeth, is that he's working in Italian. He made it the, his operatic Italian was very immediate. It was easy for Italian audiences or people who knew Italian to understand. It's like a Broadway musical, except with a lot better music. Um, so that's the thing. Native English speakers, we don't actually get to enjoy 
Shakespeare most of the time because we're forced to listen to a version that's similar to how Shakespeare wrote it as opposed to updated in current language. When it's translated into Italian or other languages, they get to hear it in an immediate way that we English speakers don't. That's kind of unfair. Anyway, I want to go through the other ones really quickly. Um, Parsifal is a Wagner one, and it's religious, and I don't want to go into it. Um, Romeo and Juliet. I don't like Romeo and Juliet. Talk about Shakespeare. Um, Don Pasquale is another comedy, and it's a lot of fun. And again, for some of these comedies in Spell Canto, you actually don't need to know anything going into it. They will set it up for you. Uh, the situation will become clear. It's not like comedy in these are not subtle. And then last but not least, Cozy Fantute, which is Mozart. And um, it's not my favorite Mozart, but it's one of his three great uh, Italian operas um, he did with Lorenzo da Ponte, which is uh, Cozy Fantute, Marriage of Figaro, and, um, sorry, Don Giovanni. Um, now, Marriage of Figaro is my favorite. But all three of them have great music. The plots in all of them, again, are fairly straightforward. The weird thing with regards to this specific production is that they basically set it on Coney Island. Uh, a lot of people objected to this production because they had sideshow performers as part of this, and obviously that was not part of the original opera. That's okay. You know, the Falstaff adaptation to 1950s um, Country Club worked actually very well. A couple people grumbled, it's not Elizabethan, who cares? Uh, the Met Opera audiences often are very conservative in terms of they like to have their productions fairly traditional uh, compared to some of the other opera houses. Um, that said, it captures a lot of the spirit of what is the setting, and it's supposed to be uh, two Italian men have their teenage honeys. They're all young idiots, basically. And an older middle-aged man it tells the men that, no, the women are not going to be true to, to them. They're, they're just like short-term boyfriend-girlfriend. These are not long-term relationships at this point. Um, it's basically adolescent crushes. And he basically plays a trick on all of them, the older man, including Despina, who is the clever servant character in this one, uh, played by Kelly O'Hara, I believe, in this um, production. But the whole concept was, wherever this was originally set, it was kind of like a beachside town. It's a vacation place. You'd have your summer fling kind of thing. And so that's why they're setting it in Coney Island, trying to give that same kind of flair. And again, kind of 1950s, maybe 30s. It's indefinite. All of these, the Cozy Fantute, Don Pasquale, and... Uh, sorry, Falstaff, have kind of an element of fantasy to them. The productions do set them in a realistic setting, as it were, but um, it is like the fantasy of a sitcom. How, how about that? You've got uh, mistaken identities, you switch people here and there. It's very standard old comedy, and it's a lot of fun. Um, I just want to talk about one other thing I've been, I just started, and this is Andrew Lloyd Webber, and I'm sorry to say, Okay, I just went from, like, the greatest opera composers, Mozart and Verdi, the top two. Shut up, Wagner people. Um, Mozart and Verdi and Andrew Lloyd Webber. Yeah, Andrew Lloyd's Webber's music, <laughs> that which is good, he took from much better composers, like Puccini. Um, it's an old tradition, steal only from the best, my child. Uh it is very schlocky, it's very cheesy, and you know what? Sometimes you just want something that's cheesy. They have been, uh, he just started this last weekend with Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat uh, with Donny Osmond in that, and they're going to do Jesus Christ Superstar over Easter weekend. Yeah, I know. It is kind of a tacky show, but it's not that bad. I've seen it before. I've not seen that specific production before, so I'm going to watch it. Why not? Uh, there were other things going on. I thought there was supposed to be a Hamilton sing-along, but it sound, looks like that may not be going forth. Maybe got too much attention, or they weren't able to execute. That's okay. Um, there's a lot of fun stuff going on. People are having uh, <laughs> virtual cocktail parties and that kind of thing. Um, 
I don't stay up that late. I, I could go to bed early. In any case, have fun. There's a lot of free entertainment out there. I really, if you've not seen these operas, I am talking up the ones that are comedies. Uh, Falstaff is just pure comedy. Nothing bad happens. Um, it's a lot of good pranks. And Falstaff, even though he's the butt of the pranks and he is made to look a fool, he comes out nothing. You can't, you can't keep a, a lively man like Falstaff down. Um, Don Pasquale is just pure fun. And Cozy Fantute is problematic, as they say. But a lot of very gorgeous music, as per always with Mozart. And you can't feel too deeply for any of these characters. It's I think the sideshow aspect really helps provide a distance between you and the characters in the opera because it's so theatrical. Um, that you know, just enjoy the music. Don't worry about how realistic the plot is, because that's not the point. So enjoy. <laughs>